holy, 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 holy is God Almighty. Let us start this morning and let us have a look at what God says about the latter days to the house of Israel and to the house of Jacob, his people. Let us see if the word of God is true to what he says it is. Let us behold what God has said through the eyes of Ezekiel the prophet of God. As he said that no longer will this be prolonged. No longer will the visions be held back. But every prophecy will come to pass as the prophet Ezekiel says it. And let us have a look at chapter 1 again and have a look and see through the eyes of God what He has in store for His people. Let us see if God is God of all creation. Let us see if God has spoken the truth from the Alpha to the Omega. Let us have a look and see the vision of Ezekiel as we see these cherubims and they only go forward. They do not turn to the left and they do not turn to the right. They only go forward. Now let's have a look and go through scriptures from the beginning. Let us start from the beginning and work our way through scriptures and back to the Messiah, the Lord of all. Let us go from the Messiah back into scripture, back through Ezekiel the prophet and back up to the year 2014, the year of the Lord God Almighty. Let us have a look. We see that God has chosen symbols and signs through the Bible from the beginning of time right through. Now let's take a man, as I call this, Moses, Joshua and the Messiah. Moses, Joshua and the Messiah. And let us see if we can find the Messiah in Moses. Let us see if we find the Messiah in Joshua. And let us see the Messiah as He is the Lamb of God and as the Judge of God. Now let's go to Ezekiel first. And Ezekiel has this vision given to him by God through the Spirit of the living God. And he says, Lo and behold, upon the throne I beheld the form of a man. He is called the Son of Man because he is the Messiah. And then we all see, we see that Ezekiel says from his loins and upwards I beheld this shining outward metal emerald of form of the living God. And that is the living word of God, the Lamb of God. And then he says from his loins and downwards, I beheld the flame of fire, the judgment of God upon the earth. Not upon you, O Israel, not upon you, O Judah, and not upon the tribe of Moab, because God has judged them over time. He never puts the same judgment. That is why Ezekiel number 2 is not in Israel. Otherwise, he would be tearing Israel down and he would bring in Israel under judgment. They are free. They have been set free by the Messiah himself. There is no more judgment upon them. And let us go back to Moses and let us see if we can read through scriptures what Moses is all about. Let us have a look. And we see in Ezekiel it says, If there was Noah, if there was Daniel, and if there was Job, they would only be the ones saved in that house that their prophet has prophesied about. And he has said, Thus saith the Lord, 
And it will come about just as God says it will come about. Because God spoke it through the Holy Word. The Scriptures of the Living God. Now let's have a look at Moses. Moses was saved by putting him into a basket. And the Lord guided that basket through the waters. And it had a safe landing in the house of Pharaoh. And M Moses was brought up in the house of Pharaoh. He was born up, brought up in a house of sin and iniquity. But he never forgot where he came from. And then we find Moses clouded with all the mammon, the money, the gold, the silver and the riches. But that is never enough because it does not fill the soul and spirit of the man that God made and created him to be. And we find Moses at a point in his life that he looked and he said, Lo and behold, my people are getting beaten. They are slaves. I need to do something. And then he went and he killed the man that drove the slave and beat and whipped the slave. And then we find Moses had to run into the desert. And now we see the hand of God upon Moses all the, from the beginning to the end of his life. We see Moses wandering round and round and round in the desert. What was Moses doing? Do you think for a minute that Moses was only tending the sheep? No, he was looking for God. He was being taught by God Almighty through the Spirit of the living God. He was being taught from God Himself. How do you know this preacher? Simply this, he had an encounter with the burning bush. He had an encounter with God Himself. And then the Lord God said to him, Moses, Go, go set my people free, because I, the Spirit of God, is upon you, and I've set you free. I've given you freedom to set my people free. And then you find Moses going to Pharaoh's house, and he said to Pharaoh, Set my people free. We find many Moseses around. They are forever saying, set my people free. Set my people free. But they're forever staying there. They are not going straight forward. They are not going, as Ezekiel said about the Sherebus, they go straight forward under the anointing and power of God, looking not to the left, and right, but going straight forward because the Spirit of God is in them and they walk forward. They do not walk backwards. They do not stumble left and right. And then we find Moses went with signs and wonders to Pharaoh's house and he said, Pharaoh, here's the staff given to me by God. Here's the staff anointed by God. And he changed and he consumed all the serpents that were around. And then we look back at the Messiah and we see the same Messiah doing the same thing. And we see that Moses led the people out because they saw the anointing and power of God upon a man of God. And they said, Moses, where you lead, we will follow. For we hear the voice of God through you. And they followed Moses out. Now I want to pick, show you something so important that so many of us missed. But yet we have not missed it because we have eyes but we don't see. We have ears but we don't hear. Because we do not inquire from God Almighty. We rather go to the devil and choir from him. We rather call up those people that try and hear from, from the devil. And let me tell you, the devil can't tell you the time. He doesn't know the time. He cannot see in the future. 
He has not the ability of the eyes of the eagle of Ezekiel that he says you can see into the future. You know all things past. You need not look left. You need not look right because the Lord God is leading you straight ahead. And then we find Moses. Was Moses doing the same thing? Was Moses not walking straight ahead? He had to have a battle first. He had to fight the devil. He had to get the people free. He had to put his hands up and fight the devil and say, set my people free. And then the signs and wonders came and fell from heaven and it destroyed everything that the devil was trying to stop. And Moses left and went out. But the one thing about the devil, he doesn't give up. He carries on following you. He will follow you until God separates him and God destroys him. And then when they stood before the waters, the Lord said, Moses, stretch out your staff. Because Moses had inquired from God and said, Lord, the people are crying out. Look behind us. There is a multitude of army behind us and they are after us and they are going to enslave us again and they are going to take us into bondage again and they are going to chain us, they are going to whip us, they are going to beat us, they are going to put us down again. We should have stayed there and Moses said no, I am hearing from God Almighty, have I not shown you through God the signs and the wonders that he's done? Have I not shown you the might and power of Almighty God? And he turned his back on the devil and he stretched out his staff and he began to walk through the path that God had opened up for him. And they have found the bones and the skeletons and all the, the possessions that were there. They have found it and it is in the bottom of the sea. God is true to his word. God will ever be true to his word. And then when they got to the other side, when they crossed over and they were safe, God brought the waters back down. And the evidence is all there. It is all there. But the devil will lie and say it's not around. I can't find it. I can't see it. Because he doesn't want the people of God turning back to God. But he cannot stop what God has done. And what God has promised. And what God has foretold will be. And then we see this miraculous taking place. And let us see if we can tie up the scriptures. We see two men going into the desert. We see Aaron and we see Moses. And there are always the Aaron's and Moses's. There will always be the Aaron and Moses. There is not always a transformation and changing. Moses went in under the Spirit and in the Spirit of God. Moved by God, representing the Spirit of the living God. Just as the new covenant has said, there is a Holy Spirit that is poured out upon all flesh. And upon all flesh it's poured out. And then we have Aaron walking in there to the desert with the people with a heart of stone that is not being transformed. It is a heart of stone. And we find something miraculous happening. God's teaching taking place. We see something changing. The first generation were never ready for God. So they passed away. And then God changed the next generation. And He poured out His Spirit upon them. You do not tell me they were not walking in the Spirit of God. And the Spirit was not hovering over them. The Spirit of God was in them because I know this because the spies said to Rahab, Thus saith the Lord your God, thus saith the Lord our God. And they declared whoever comes into this home will be saved. Aaron, Aaron was in fear so many times. 
always bowing down to the people, always pleasing the people. Moses stood alone and he would not please the people until the people were changed and they all were like him. They were all made like him. How do we know this? We know this because the Torah says it. We have the pillar of cloud by day and the fire by night. We have the Messiah, the grace, love and mercy of God by day and the judgment by night. Because by day we come under the covering of God. By night the devil comes out to play and the judgment of God is upon them. Then we find another miraculous thing take place. And that is this. Two men walked into that desert. One man came out. And how was he clothed? How was he clothed? The first generation could not get rid of this slavery attitude. They could not get rid of the chains that were around them bound by slavery. Bound by what was taught them on how to do and how to act. The second generation was taught by God. And they moved by God. They moved by the Spirit of God. And they moved as Moses moved. Then we find one man come out. Joshua. Joshua was bearing the sword of the Spirit of the living God. And he said from his loins and downwards, I know what I must do. I know how to do it because I was taught it all in the desert. I was taught the grace and the mercy and the love of God. And now I must go over. And he went straight out ahead. Moses stayed this side forever a beacon pointing forward to the Messiah. And Joshua saw what he had to do. Ezekiel from his loins and downwards. I need to bear that separated by the belt. Separated by the belt. But one and the same, led by one and the same spirit, led by God himself. And that's why we find in Jericho, the walls come tumbling down. It was not a battle made and won by man. It was a battle that God won before. In the desert, God had won it. Now let's go and have a look further. And then lo and behold, we see the Messiah. And then we see the Lamb of God. And let us see if the Messiah fulfills the promises of God. And let's see if the Messiah fulfills the word of God. In Isaiah chapter 1, chapter 2. Chapter 2, it says this. And in the latter days, I will make Jerusalem my house again. I will make them a nation above all nations again. They will lead again by the Spirit of God. And all nations will come. And let us have a look and see if this is what's indeed happening in the, in, the, in the world today. Let us have a look. Let's go back and see where did it start. It all started by the hand of God. It all started there. And then Isaiah says the Messiah is coming. But you have to prepare the way. You have to prepare the way. For the coming of the Lord. And he'll do it again exactly the same way. And let's see if the word of God is true. God himself speaks through the prophet Isaiah. And he says through the prophet Isaiah. I don't like your sacrifices. I don't like your idols. I don't like your, the way you perform. I don't like your attitudes. I see only a people that have loaded down the, the word of God. Instead of ten commandments, you have 
loaded it down and with weights tied. <coughs> Excuse me. With weights tying the people to the earth. And the only one that ties a man to the earth is the devil himself. Let us see if the Messiah fulfills this. If he fulfills what God has spoken of. Then I see a Messiah coming up. And he shows all the signs and wonders. Just as Moses did in the beginning. And all the signs and wonders. And he takes the lepers and he says, go present yourself to the priest. Go show yourself to the priest and let him see and let him check you out to make sure that is what is here. He was saying, I'm the Messiah, the son of the living God. Let us see if he fulfilled scriptures. The scripture says a priest is not to come into contact with the dead. Yet Jesus walks over to Lazarus, the grave, and says, part the stone. And he says, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus comes out. Why did he do that? He was fulfilling Isaiah, which was saying, I don't care about your vernacular, your processes, your systems, the way you do a thing. I, God, do it my way. And so he was turning his back, back to Isaiah and saying, I'm fulfilling Isaiah. Let's have a look. Your Sabbaths, Isaiah says, I don't like the way that you withhold your Sabbaths and make them this idol. And Jesus comes along and he heals the people on the Sabbath. And they say to him, Lord, how can you leave, heal the people on the Sabbath? And then the Lord says, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Because God and God alone made it. His time is not my time and your time. It's His time. He created time for you and I. Then we find other places where the Messiah fulfilled scriptures, what the Lord God said through Isaiah. Another thing, it was not a custom of the Jews to spit on the ground and take the mud and then put it in your eyes. That was an insult. Yet we find the Messiah doing exactly that. He spat on the ground because he was saying, I make the rules. He was born through the virgin birth. What was he saying? I, God above, make the rules because I said this is how he's coming through the birth, through a virgin birth. Through the lineage of David, he will come. Every scripture fulfilled. Every scripture fulfilled. And then we go back to Ezekiel and we see the Lamb of God. From his loins and upwards. And from his loins and downwards. And we see even the Lord Jesus Christ was pointing forward. He was walking straight ahead. He looked not left and looked not right. He went straight forward. He moved straight forward. And what is he saying? Church, wake up. Wake up. See how the Lord has done it. From his loins and upwards. From his loins and downwards. Israel. Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, the Bible says, how I cried, how I longed to heal you, how I longed to soothe your body and fix it all up, but you would not turn to me. And then they say, don't prophesy, don't bring in prophecies, but what can the servant of God do but to declare the word of God as it stands? If he does not declare it, then he is responsible. The accountability 
God said, the accountability. Ezekiel, when your tongue is loose, speak it out. When you have my message, speak it out. When I utter through you, speak it out. Because they must prepare the way of the Lord. No longer to be deferred. And then they say, it is not time to build the houses. God says, it's time. House of Judah, it's time to look at who you serve. And serve only God. And be moved only by the Spirit of God. That is the Word of God. That is the power of God. That is the anointing of God. And where it goes, right throughout the universe, the church is rising up. And then we find this terrible nation spoken about in the Word of God. All round about us, changing day by day, changing left and right, as they focus on God and move out under God, going in the same direction that God said they would go. Straight out ahead to Israel, to Jacob, they go and the brothers are coming together and nothing but nothing will stop the hand of God from filling the word of God. Nothing will stop it. The scriptures say, weep and wail, shout it, scream it, do whatever you want, but declare it is coming, it will not be stopped. And then you got God TV, and as God is growing it and growing it and growing it, you see the fulfillment of prophecies. As they head straight to Israel, they head straight to Israel and everybody's turning back to the house of Israel just as the word of God has declared it from the beginning of time and said, thus saith God, it will be so, nothing will change it, nothing will stop it. The devil cannot tell the time, he doesn't know anything about this word of God. He doesn't know that God says in the latter days, this is what you, is becoming. You will no longer be in charge. The people of God changing from bottom right through to the top. Presidents changing. Ministers changing. Turning back to God. No longer serving a defeated foe but serving the living God. And that's how it ought to be. And that's why the Bible says, Israel, your borders will be extended because the house of Israel is coming together. The brothers are coming together and they're all coming to you. And how can you lead if you have no eyes and if you have no ears? We need the spirit of the living God. No longer hearts of stone, but hearts of flesh, led by God himself. That is why the Bible says, in the end, there will be no more prophets. Because they mislead my people. They've ruined the vineyard. They've destroyed the grapevine. And the tribe of Moab, we read it in scriptures, we are told it in scriptures. The Lord said, I took a seed out of this branch and I planted it and flew far away and planted it on top of a mountain. And I nurtured it and I fed it and I looked after it. Because as Israel came under judgment, so did the tribe of no of the Moabites come under the judgment of God. No one else has befallen that judgment but those two. The, the tree and the branch that God has grafted in 
have both gone the same route and they're both coming back together under God and nothing will stop it. Amen. Amen.